Hey everybody out there, Chris and Mike here, and welcome back to another indie comic book review. However, this indie review, as of this episode, is now part of the Dark Avenger comic book review series. So instead of it being indie review episode number 35, we're retiring the title, technically, because the thumbnail is still going to be the indie review, because this technically is the indie review. Uh, the only difference is now it's going to be the Dark Avenger comic book review episode 304, uh, 200! Why do I keep saying 300? 240 indies. Yep. We so, I figured well, we might as well attach the indies to the big two because technically this is all basically the same show. Uh, but these are still the indie reviews. It's going the exact same way we've been doing it. We're in the exact same place where we always record the indie reviews. So it's the exact same thing. We're just changing up the title so that basically it all connects into one full series of videos for one week. And also, I will be posting um, all three reviews on ComicFrontline.com at some point in one big post. So, for those of you guys that want to check it out on Comic Frontline, I'll have all three together at the beginning of the following week, obviously, because we do the indie reviews late. For now, maybe we'll change that up as time moves forward. Anyway, I'm not going to waste any more time. We are fresh off of New York Comic Con Special Edition, as you guys can see. Had a great time there. A little a quick note, really quickly. The... It's a podcast special episode. Might not happen due to the fact that we are backed up on videos not only on this channel but on Comic Frontline and we need to catch up. So uh, probably if I don't do the special episode by Tuesday, I'm just going to do a full-fledged episode recapping the special edition New York Comic Con plus with the comics and everything else. Uh, I'll just throw make it a, a, a full episode of it instead. I'll try, guys. I'm going to try my hardest, but... It's really hard, especially because we were backed up on videos already, and now we have to catch up even more because Special Edition cut us off another weekend. So we're going to try our hardest. I'll try my best. Mike's going to be on the show. Um, see if other people pop on on the show also. Anyway, I've wasted two minutes of this episode already. We have two physical copies for this week, and we have 11 digital books, uh, two not from this week and nine from this week. Uh, by the way, the books that we are going to review were released on... June 4th, 2011. Uh, tw 14. 14. I saw 11. I'm sorry. I saw, I sh yeah, I saw number yeah. 11. I was like, that. don't look at numbers. Yeah. <laughs> so, 2014. I'm not looking at that iPod anymore. Good. I, 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 anyway, I, we are going to start off with one of our favorite comics that we've been reading that uh, have been out for a while. Didn't come out this week, but it's still an awesome read. Yep. And that is Argo Comics Anthology, issue number Five. And yes. in this issue, we have three stories once again. We have Death Squad's conclusion. We have the, another story with the Paladins. And then we round it out with Teen Machine. Yep. And in the last story, or the last part of the Death Squad story, Death Squad was deep in space. However, Artillery, I love her, this character, and I love what happened. Apparently, her, sh her suit mm -hmm. transformed into a spaceship. <laughs> However... It was her suit. So now she's naked. <laughs> and my favorite part was when Sensai X is right behind her. That was mine too. And she says, I hope those are your nunchucks. And you see the, the bead of sweat going down his head. I, I died laughing. It was awesome. Yeah. It was really well done. We're going at some serious now. <laughs> yeah. So they show back up to take on Black Pearl. And uh, they tell they take out the porter right away, so this way he can't teleport them away again to somewhere else. And one by one, they actually take out all of Black Pearl's um, people. Black Pearl escapes because he ends up leaving them a little bit of a parting gift in the form of a bomb. I love the artwork. Artwork was spectacular for this story. Um, and for this, oh god, I keep this chapter of the book. I'll call it a chapter. Artillery um, uses her suit to dis uh, disarm the bomb, and however, unfortunately, Black Pearl has escaped, so it's the end for now. This leaves for a perfect opening for a Death Squad series, if Dan ever so chose to make a Death Squad series. However, we don't know. There are other parts still to the anthology. Maybe Death Squad will come back in the anthology. Or maybe there's a story that Dan's working on as we speak. Uh, continuing Death Squad. Yeah, okay. But for right now, this was a really good story. I enjoyed it a lot. And it had a good conclusion. Yep. Next one I know you liked. Yes. One Paladins. thing I liked with the Paladins was 
Dan put Alucard in there. For those of you that don't know, Alucard, that's the son of Dracula. Alucard is Dracula backwards. Right. Yeah. So, uh, as Chris said, uh, they showed the story of uh, Alucard um, in there. Um, but uh, it just shows for like uh, one page just uh, what he is. And then it just goes back uh, to the years where uh, there are these uh, like three boys that are uh, like uh, making a campfire and stuff like that. Um, but then uh, it also relates to Merlin's uh, amulet. Again, yeah. Again, which summons the uh, paladins because uh, there is trouble that lurks in the forest. In the like, form of vampires. In the form of vampires. So they summon the paladins to... Uh, well, Jack summons the paladins. Yeah, Jack summons the powers, thank you for reminding me, of the uh, paladins. And uh, I love the fight scene. Like It's like really amazing, and I could actually... The artwork, you could actually... like While I was reading it, it's like you could actually see it happening. Like, all the moves and everything. And uh, after their uh, duty was done, they left. And uh, I think that guy was uh, Kirk. Dirk. Oh, Dirk. Like, he was a vampire. He was a jerk to the kids, no no pun intended, and then he turned into a vampire. The one funny thing, I'm sorry, was the last panel where um, Jack's like, oh my god, he's a vampire, and he's like, nope, the paladins are right, there's no problems, it's a beautiful sunrise, and he dies, and you just, <laughs> you just see the two other, his two other friends standing there, one kid looked like he had his hand in his pocket, just watching the guy burn to death. I'm like, if I was those kids, I'd be running for dear life at this point. And they're just standing there watching it like it's a bonfire. And Jack's like, oh, well, Paladins are right. Look at that beautiful sunrise. I'm like, really? Really? A person just burst into flames and died, and you got two people watching it like it's a campfire. And Jack's like, oh, whatever. But then again, with Jack, I can understand because he has the Paladins that fight for him and everything. But with the other two kids, you'd think normally any other kid would run. Well, I guess they you want to show That made them. me laugh. Yeah, but that I loved funny. it. That panel, when I got to that panel, I'm watching these kids watch this guy burn. I was dying. I was on the I was literally laughing on the floor at that panel cuz it's like Does anybody want to run? Also, oh, that's why you were on the floor cuz you read that poem. Next is yours, Teen Machine. Yeah, so in uh Teen Machine, uh they're like these heroes that are they even in a uh, elderly uh, home or something? Yeah, they're in an elderly home. Yeah, they're in an elderly home. One guy's yeah. talking about the Freedom Troop, who's an older, kind of like um, they were superheroes way back right, in the day. But, but the other guy's like saying, you know, all heroes are, you know, like they're really like nothing these days, you know. Mm -hmm. But then there was something that happened at the news with the robot. Um, I forgot what the robot was. Uh, oh, Destructo. Destructo, thank you. Uh, he makes an appearance in this issue, and he causes mayhem and everything. And um, he uh, destroys all of the freedom fighters except for Major Meteor. Right. And who then, flies away and disappears forever. Right, so then afterwards, um, there was a uh, news thing that was happening where Destructo was actually uh, causing mayhem then. Again, he was back. Again. And uh, I forgot what that... Teen Machine. No, 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 the guy that went after him, the, the one that didn't like superheroes, I think. Oh, I probably. forgot his name, but it was. I, I it turned out that. to be, spoiler alert, Captain Meteor. Right, and then uh, when Destructo was doing it, he was like saying, oh no, not again. And yeah, because Destructo shot the Freedom Fighter, uh, the, um, the Teen Machine with the same blast that he hit the Freedom Fighters with, and they disappeared, and then that's when we find out that um, the old man is Captain Meteor, and um, enraged, he literally beats the crap out of Destructo, who actually admits to him that it's not a death ray. I just sent them to another dimension, and then, and then he, brought he that. opens up the portal. He's like, "I realize that your rage is is more uh, my my rage towards you was not as deserved because you have more rage towards me." He reopens the portal. Yeah. Team Machine comes back, and so do the long lost. Freedom fighters. And then he says that superheroes aren't that bad after all. Like, just to see that just after all that happened, I thought that was a really great moment in the book. And then, of course, we have the pinups with Don't You Dare. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the advertisement for Sororia Power. <laughs> oh, you could guess uh, which pinup's my favorite. Oh, let if me guess. Want. It's the one that's probably. Well, I like that one. This. That one's pretty cool. But no, it, keep going. 
Yeah, that one's one of them. Oh, really? There's more than one? Well, yeah, I mean, there was some of them. That one I thought was cool. That one was awesome. With the gun and everything. No, not that one. No, that That's one the Freedom cool. Fighters. Yeah. And then that was it. Yeah, so which one were you talking about? Oh, probably didn't think of something else. Oh, well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All in all, five star book as always. Dan just delivers amazingly in each one of his. Um, I mean, his stories are just so amazing. Like I, really I like it, and I like how week. I like how each story kind of like if it if it's long enough, it's actually to be continued in the next issue. This issue actually all the all the stories ended, or the one that was from the previous issue ended. So now with issue number six. It's going to be all fresh new stories. Yeah, and with great artwork and in their own uh, universe, it actually gives us uh, like more of an interest to read it and to know about the heroes and yeah. everything. Also to note, uh, Dan was just at a convention this past weekend and he, re he introduced a new book, which hopefully we'll be reviewing at some point. More of Towards the Kids, but looks really funny and really good, and it's called Pickle Man. Issue number one's out now. If you're interested, wow. check it out at ArgoComics.com. I would highly recommend almost every single book, because I haven't read every single book yet. Every book I've read, let's put it this way, I would recommend every single book I've read thus far. And I don't know, how would, would you feel the same way with Sororia Power? Well, I just... Recommend it. Oh, recommend it, absolutely. Well, for adults yes. as well. So, all books that we've read so far, we highly recommend. You can check them all out uh, at ArgoComics.com. That's A-R-G-O Comics.com. And uh, check out all the books that um, are there. And there's a lot I hear that is going to be coming out from Argo Comics really soon. And that's Check really it out on Facebook if you want to see all the up-to-date news from Argo Comics. Yep. And before we move forward with the new books, there is one book from last week that we oh, did yes. not have a chance to uh, review because we didn't have it at the moment. And um, that this book came out last week. Yes. Which was May 28th, 2014. Mm -hmm. And that's Shadow Man End Times, issue number two. Yes. Mike, this was your book. Yeah, in this comic, uh, it was more uh, related to um, uh, Joshua, or, or Joshua. Basically, the one that controlled the uh, Shadow LOA. And Jack um, is looking for his father. Because he wants to know about this whole thing of what's been going on. Uh, it is very... What are you doing? Yeah, I'm just closing this. Oh. It is uh, very dark, um, the artwork, but it actually uh, shows meaning uh, towards uh, the story of that. So, uh, you know, Jack is just, um, you know, like really that was the whole point of the story. And uh, the wife of uh, Joshua, I, I hope I'm saying the name right, uh... His wife talks him like saying, you know, like everything of what's been going on, you know, has been really hard for Jack because of all the things that's been messing with his head. And there are a bunch of other stuff that happened, but you could definitely uh, read the comic book if you haven't yet. Meanwhile, Jack breaks up with, uh, oh, what's her name? Co-op? I can't remember what her name was. Um, like... Alyssa? Alyssa, yeah. Like, they first had a little, uh, like, talk with each other, but then afterwards, as a sacrifice that he had to make, uh, later on in the book, uh, he breaks up with her, saying that, you know, like, how he really didn't love her, and that it wasn't really, like, it's him, really, not like he was before. And, um, you know, I mean, th this book was just, like I said before, just him looking for the father but here's the thing now that he made the sacrifice there's something that he's gonna have to do and that's in order to see uh, his father and if he wants to do that he's gonna have to uh, do something uh, that he's not really so keen on doing and that's to be continued or to be concluded I believe in the uh, next issue and that did that to me when I read the book too so don't worry um, and it caused me to lose all the other books yeah but uh, all in all guys like uh, the adventure was uh, really interesting um, I like how they mentioned about the whole uh, shadow LOA mm -hmm. with that but um, I'm really enjoying reading that book along with uh, 
the shadow it's called. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the shadow. I wonder if they're ever gonna do a crossover between those two. Um, like, like I always thought, like maybe that would be interesting. But uh, you could read more about this book. Um, you know, if you have or haven't yet. But I would really recommend uh, you check it out. It's really something awesome. And while I fix this now, Michael, you can do your first physical copy. I have a physical copy this week as well. Okay. From Archie Comics, The Great Chaos Caper, Part 2 of 4 of Sonic Universe, Issue Number 64. The Adventures of Knuckles with Team Chaos continue on. But last issue, they ran into uh, some trouble with the... Uh, uh, who are they called? Um, I can't... Oh, uh, Team Hooligan. With uh, three characters of Bark... Uh, the polar bear, Knack the weasel, and uh, being the dynamic duck. And here's some artwork, which is drawn really nicely. So they're fighting each other, and they're going after what uh, Knuckles and Team Calx are going after, which is the, uh, the emerald. And they notice that, um, you know, like... They don't have it because the hooligans thought that Team Cax and Knuckles had it because they see that it's moving and they think that it's, you know, Dr. Eggman that's doing it. So after the Team Hooligans find out about that, they go off. Meanwhile, Knuckles and uh, Team Cax are going to try to find it before they do. And they're going towards Church Mountain to uh, find out uh, more about that. And then it relates back to where. Um, the whole, uh, what, what was it called? The, uh, like the emerald that they did, uh, back then. Because Knuckles is looking for the spirits, but then he's just looking for the chaos emeralds. And back at the launch base zone where, um, Relic was supposed to look after the chaos emerald, there's been lots of other stuff that happens, and you could read it for yourselves to find out. So, uh, there's lots of references uh, in the Sonic games that were in the past, which I understood every one of them. But, um, you know, it's just really on the adventures of just looking for the Chaos Emerald. Uh, to find out more about that, uh, you can see the uh, comic book. Uh, but, however, there are some trouble that lurks uh, in the tunnels. And uh, there's lots of... Uh, they starting like to go crazy with Knuckles just trying to find the Chaos Emerald, but we get introduced to uh, one character that's actually behind the movement of the Chaos Emerald, and uh, I guess we won't find out who it is until uh, the next issue, which I thought was uh, pretty interesting um, to see that. So we'll find out next issue who it is, but. Really recommend it, even for the kids who are Sonic fans. Um, I really enjoyed the comic book, and can't wait to see the uh, next two parts of the story concluded. The Wake issue 9 of 10, and honestly guys, at this point, this is definitely not like the first half of the story. Uh, I feel like, I don't know, this issue continued with uh, Leeward trying to find out where the broad... Like, she found out where the broadcast was coming from, and now it's basically erased against the government to get to this place and I feel like the government's continually being thrown in our face throughout the past couple issues plus this one I mean they find her and then they bomb her and then they attack even further and that's when the mer people show up and they attack as well and I just feel like I'm, I'm tired of seeing the army it's like the president doesn't want this fully solved or anything or taken care of or you know she doesn't want anybody following the stuff that's going on with these uh, radio signals and messages and Leeward gets dragged under with the other Mer people and spoiler alert here this is where she meets Lee Archer from the beginning the first part the first chapter I guess of the story arc and now basically everything's gonna come full circle and um, the next issue is the last, but it's like, I don't know, the first five issues were so strong. The issue, the story was really, really going very well. I feel like since we jumped into the future, things have kind of gone south. Hopefully, 
Uh, at this point, we only have one issue to go, so I'm going to get it, but hopefully at least the conclusion will be really good. That's what I'm hoping for. So, out of five stars, I would say it's an average read at best. Um, I just, I'm not liking Lee Word's story. Really quick honorable mention goes to Garfield, issue number 26. This issue had full Garfield art, no different artists, no two oh, different art stories. Oh, thank God. And uh, I really love this story. The the stories in this book are always fun to read. And then, of course, at the end, you got some of the um, older, um, what are they called? The, um, the Garfield Sunday classic strips. Oh, I love the Sunday And classic. then in the end, you have top ten things Garfield wants for his birthday, which I thought was awesome. You have a vintage 1978, Garf a couple of vintage Garfield <laughs> um, pictures. And it's kind of weird to see how Garfield looked way back in what year was it again? 1978. Very weird to see how he looked then, but... But it looks almost accurate. Yeah, they just changed him up a little bit. Yeah, but it looks good. I, I don't have no complaints. No, I have no complaints. It's really nice to see some vintage stuff. And that's why I really love Garfield. Uh, let's see, where do we want to go from here? I want to make sure there's nothing else from almost this lost. company. <laughs> here we go. There is. Boom Studios, it's yours. Yes. Big Trouble in Little China, issue yeah, number yeah. one. For those of you that are familiar with the movie, I haven't seen the complete, complete movie, but I have seen most of it. I miss the beginning every single time it comes on TV, but I always end up catching it in the middle and in the end. Yes. So, in this first issue, um, it has, uh, it's really uh, funny, uh, actually a little bit. It takes place right after the movie, as a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah I was actually going to mention that. And uh, I just want to know what his name is because he mentions it. Jack Burton. Yeah, the Jack Continuing Adventures of Jack Burton, and, Jack Burton. Pork, and the Pork Chop Express. Yeah, so Jack Burton, he's driving on a rainy uh, night one day. And he sees this uh, endangered orangutan, from what he calls it, that uh, you know, like runs him off the road and uh, from Lo Pen. He, he's one of the monsters of Lo Pen. Yeah, and, and I was gonna say he's, and he thought he was like uh, one of Lo Pen's uh, monsters. So then he didn't look uh, like he caused any harm. Like he's actually uh, very nice to the guy. And I liked how when he's like saying, oh, I can't leave you out in the rain, so why don't you just come along for the ride? And, uh, you know, how they, you know, like the little moment where it's funny. So uh, he just tries to say, you know, just try to be cool and everything. And uh, he goes to... Uh, Wang. Yeah, Wang. He goes to Wang and he tells him about the orangutan that he has. And uh, he's just saying, you know... Uh, like, what should I do with them? Like, should I, should I keep them or, or should I, you know, do something else? And there's like a whole big dialogue of what uh, he tells them of what he should do and everything. And he, they explain the whole low pan of where, you know, that stuff was referenced to. Uh, the all work looks really good, though. Like, I will admit that. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, that that's really the whole uh, venture. So Jack decides to keep... Uh, the orangutan with him, you know, just for like sidekick stuffs and whatnot. And uh, there's lots of other stuff that he mentions of um, other adventures and other adventures. I guess from the past movie, so the the past movie. No, just was it? in general. Oh, I thought it was from the past movie or something. Mm -mm. It looked f familiar to me, but anyway, so there's this uh, assassin that comes in. That's about to attack everyone, and uh, he uh, gets the orangutan to help him out. And he just says, like, just attack them, and he just goes, throws them up in the air and stuff like that. And he was, like, really, really strong. And, um, I mean, Jack gets some action, too, but uh, Wang uh, helps him with that special ability that he has, the electric shock. I guess that's what it is, because that's what it looks like. But, um... Lots of other stuff happened in this book that's like that gets like really um, intense, so to say. And uh, I guess this is going to lead up to uh, more of what we're going to see in the story. But there's uh, a task that the villain, I forgot what his name was, that tells him what to do. And says, you, you will do such and such to keep your friends alive. And if you want to find out what that task is that he accepts, you're going to have to read the story to find out. But I really found this to be really interesting in uh, many uh, ways. But I'm looking forward to reading the next issue, though. 
Which blade? We actually decided to check out an issue. Which blade is your 175? Uh, what's her full first name? That's what I want to know. Sarah. Sarah. Uh, actually, oh. uh, in previous uh, previous story arc, um, uh, what do you call it? relinquished the witch blade. She got rid of it, and then later on she fought to get it back. I like how they explained that in the beginning. There are three stories in this, by the way. Which I didn't know. I thought it was just the one. Yeah, like, I was wondering I why the, the pages two. were so long. And in this issue, the witch blade fights back against Sarah. Uh, it's very upset that it rejected that she rejected it, and then she tried to kill it, and then it says you know, and then it takes its its form, and it's like you know what, maybe I'll just keep you trapped here, and she's like, um, like, oh, like she knew why she got rid of. Him. Yeah, she said you were. Out, she told it you were out of control, and I wanted a life, and uh, and, uh, and it didn't want to understand that. I never, oh, and then she's like, I never asked for you, I never wanted you, but I took it on, you picked me, and, um, excuse me, but I wanted my own life again. Then the witch blade tries to kill her, she says, no, I'm stronger than you, and really quickly, all of a sudden, things change, and she's like, do you want to be with me or not? And remember, I could destroy you, and it's like, yes, I do, and she becomes witch blade again, and that's the story. Yeah. The artwork is amazing, however. I'm looking forward to the next story more because it'll be more of a substance kind of story, yeah. like the next part. This is more of a segue. It feels more like a segue story. Right. Now, you read the so, second one. Yeah, the so. second story, um, like, I like how um, it showed, um, like, the artwork was really great for the second story. It was story, a previous Witchblade. Yeah, and uh, it's where Witchblade meets with this old guy who uh, actually uh, turned out to be... Uh, a big huge red demon and they have this really amazing fight scene like I really uh, liked reading that part and the demon's like saying oh I'm stronger than you and which blades like saying uh, you know I beg to differ so um, it was a really amazing right there where um, that happened and uh, I, I like how they refer back to the arm because or the hand I should say because it really plays a huge part, and also in the third story, it plays a huge part, which I'll get to in uh, just a second, but really great stuff in there. So in the third story, what I actually liked, it talked about I what like the is artwork. the Witchblade, and it talks about the whole history of it, and uh, I liked how uh, they went up against this guy that had like a green electric stuff and always beat... Uh, the guy to the punch before he got to make the attack and everything but um it's really amazing how uh he sacrificed uh, himself for her when there was this shooting thing going on and i ooh, excuse me and i thought that that was very nice to uh see that and then and you got some sketch art sketch in art in the end which plays a really nice comic i will say that i'm sorry we didn't get to jump on it sooner but now we have maybe we'll even jump into the darkness at some point mm-hmm but, as the alarm says, just give us two seconds and we will yep. come back with the rest of the books for this week. Okay, we're back, and we are going to go into Dynamite for one issue, and it's Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files, issue number one. And this guy looks a lot like Brandt's character from the Zone 4 comic. Yeah, that's, um, D Durlux, I think. I know it started with the letter D, but... When I read this story, it was more talking about that there was a war going on, and there were, uh... You know, a bunch of heroes that got together to fight this war. And uh, so then they go out on this journey to find out uh, more of uh, what's going on. A lot on of everything. dialogue. There's a lot of dialogue. But I like that character. That character looks a lot like Bran. Yeah, the one that looks like Bran. I like his humor in the story. But, you know, they say, you know, the humor, you know, too much of it could get him killed or anything. It does look like Bran. I know. I was looking at that. I'm like saying, is that Even that one. I got to yeah. tell Bran. Yeah, so, Bran, if you're watching, hi, first, and secondly, uh, you should read the book and know what we're talking about. But, uh, yeah, long story short, they're fighting off against these uh, demons and stuff like that, and uh, they find, like, this house that uh, they go into, so much. and, um, you know, there's just so much uh, teamwork that happens in this book, and lots of uh, action. Love the artwork. The action Definitely. looks really nice. Yeah, but there was just so much dialogue. And then there's this uh, one villain that you get introduced to, which is kind of a jerk. And uh, I can't really remember what his name was. But um, 
Yeah, so when uh, we go into um, the house, um, you know, we find out, uh, well, what are you doing? Looking for his name. Oh. I think, uh, I can't really remember his name. Like that guy right there. I'm not sure if they said it before, but, um, like, I really... Baron, Baron. Baron, Bra they're, they're Baron. Brava, Bro, Bravosa? Yeah. Baron's like a real jerk in this comic book. And then when they go into this house, they meet up with, uh, the four new people, which is right there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they're doing the same thing, what they're doing with the whole, uh, war of what's going on with the demons. And speaking of that, those are the ones that are surrounding the house. And Baron says, you know, that, uh, you know, they're gonna, we, like, we got all night for this. So, uh, like, I'm not sure if I understood if they were working forces with Baron or not, but I don't know. I mean, there was just so much dialogue, but it, it looked really interesting, though. And I'm actually uh, I'm interested to see, see more of the uh, comic book. And jumping back into Image, because I made a mistake, and this is actually from Image also, we have Dream Police, issue number two. Mike, what do yes. you think of that? Dream Police, I find this more of an adventure of going with uh, supernatural stuff. Basically, um, the main character we saw with uh, Katie, and she doesn't like to be called Katie, she likes to be called Kay, and I like how... Uh, I just remembered, I forgot about Go ahead, keep talking. Uh, how he does that. They're going on a mission uh, to find out, you know, like, Dream Police are people that you know, the, the police that don't sleep, thus they don't dream either. But there was one part in the story where, uh, I can't remember what the guy's name was. I, I think it was, um, the, the guy that Kate works with, um, like, like he, he's just, um, you know, the, the main guy that, that just he's tries a to tenant. He's a lieutenant, but I can't remember what his name is. I hate when I forget that. Damon? No. No, no, no. That that that's the person that they encounter with. Uh, Joe. Damon. I think Joe. Yeah. Lieutenant Detective Joe Thursday. Yeah, something like that. So, they encounter with uh, Damon, who is uh, the one with the whole uh, electric and powers and stuff like that. And there's just like a whole big dialogue that's in this. And uh, there was one part where uh, Joe had a dream of something. And he's like saying, you know, this can't be real because we don't dream of uh, the things that are either going to happen or not happen. Or something like that. So there's just like some big that's happening in the city. Really good artwork. Yeah, the artwork's like really Brian stuff. And uh, Damon... Uh, has this old guy who comes in this comic uh, issue and actually uh, takes care of the problem. And the rest of the stuff is just all, you know... History? Not history. It it does talk about... Like, he, the old guy does talk about, uh, you know, who he is and stuff like that. Um, like, I can't remember it all word for word because there was just so much history to it. But it gives you, like, a better understanding of uh, the character in the book. But... You know, I just like how uh, he pisses Kate, uh, Katie off when she wanted to go K and not Katie. That, that, that was just the funniest part of the book, but really good. So, Lobster Johnson, get mm -hmm. the lobster part four of five. This is the pentalum issue. Yeah, and uh, the police are still uh, looking for a lobster who is wanted because they don't see him as a hero. They see him really as a menace because of all the stuff that uh, he's been doing that they feel is killing and because of him being in the newspaper. So, throughout this comic book, a lobster just looks for justice, as he does with his gun, and he goes after uh, the big boss man who is behind the whole scam of uh, lobster's um, plot, like the, the, the police to go after him and stuff like that, thinking that it was the lobster. Dr. So they. Wake Waxman? Yeah, is the guy who framed a uh, lobster that he was wanting and stuff like that. And uh, they have like a, a fight scene, and it looks like they're, they're ginormous, but I think it was like a city display or something. And uh, the way he gets him in the end, like uh, when the big monkey comes out where uh, a guy's controlling it with a remote control, uh, it felt like Power Rangers sort of, like gigantic stuff. Like, that's the way I just saw it as a sim similarity. 
but um, the way he just gets uh, Dr. Waxman, uh, he just says, he just boom, blows everything up, and he just says justice. So in his way of justice, you know, it's to do it in a violent way, but it doesn't change the fact that the police are still after him because of him being framed and all that. So, I think there's like one more issue to conclude it. Yes. Yes, so uh, definitely looking forward to seeing how we're going to conclude um, that series. Previously, the last story arc I read of Ghost, uh, this issue Mike actually read before me, so yeah. I let him, I'll let him do the review first. So this is Ghost, issue number four for volume two. Yeah. Go for and it. in Ghost, issue number four, it's really just talking about a uh, diary that they find of, um, the, the one that does ghost. Elsa? Uh, Elsa, thank you. Elsa. Or Alyssa? El Alyssa. Is it Alyssa? E L I S A, Alyssa. Yeah, Alyssa. And, uh, when they go into, uh, the abandoned parking uh, lot, or, or garage, I should say, they look for that, and it talks about her story of when she was a kid, uh, you know, playing with she other kids. She played superheroes, and ironically, she looks a lot like her ghost more. Yeah, and she looks a lot like her ghost, you know, with the costume and everything. Um, but then when they go to the forest, they see this guy who uh, murdered somebody, and he says to go get the father, who is a policeman. And uh, I really, like, was saying, like, uh, like, you should have not said that. Like, she was saying, like, you know, my dad's a policeman and everything. I'm, like, saying nah, that's a bad move because anything could have happened to her. So they find out the guy, and uh, I believe that she, the girl shot him, uh, Elsa, is who I meant. And it was, like, a really uh, heartfelt book of her life before she became the ghost. And uh, I found that to be really interesting. But uh, there's just lots of other stuff that happened in this book that are really uh, graphic. So I would recommend this for adults. But it does explain the origin of Ghost very well. Because as a matter of fact, I've always wanted to know like, what her past life experience was about. To see how she got to the way she is. So I actually thought of this to be um, very... Um, like lots of information that it gave of her past that relates to uh, how she is now in some sort of way. So um, I really enjoyed this one and I would definitely recommend you check out Ghosts for adults because there are lots of graphic stuff to happen. And with two left I think I'll do mine next. Yes. Angel and Faith issue number three. We are in season ten of Angel and Faith. And it starts off with Faith who ends up fighting this gigantic chicken demon. And her job, she thought, was to protect the little girl, to protect the humans from the demon. So she goes in an all-out fight with the demon, and then uh, Kennedy shows up and says, what are you doing? He's, uh, he's the person we're supposed to be trying to protect. He morphs down back to a human. He's like, you know what? You have a crazy agent here, and I'm done. I have no business. You're fired. I don't want your, um, I don't need your help anymore. We're done. And this is all because Faith didn't do her research. They gave her paperwork for this person, and she didn't do her homework, basically. She didn't read it. She knew nothing about this person. She didn't know that he, he lived off of the adoration of um, young females. So to her, she had no idea what she was doing. Like, right. she didn't know that she was actually supposed to protect him and what he was doing um, rather than actually go after him and, stop, and, you know, take him out. Angel, however, in Magic Town is having trouble catching up with, um, starts with the uh, Cor Cro Crody or whatever it is, Corky, uh, the uh, pixie. So again, his friend Nadi gives him like um, cryptic messages about finding the glass blower. So he goes crazy looking all over Magic Town for the glass blower. He finally finds him and he finds out that the glass blower is making these Whoa. bottles where that hold magic for the pixies. So basically that's what he finds out. Then he goes back to her and um, he's looking for more answers. She's not giving him answers. She's more along the lines of, um, oh, what's her name now? Nadira. He's looking for Nadira to give him more answers. And she's like, stop trying to control the situation and just go with the flow. You know, you need to work, like, you know, instead of fighting against the current, go with it. So she's very cryptic with what she's saying. But she's like, 
if you let things go and you go and look at the bigger picture and you take care of other things, uh, it'll all come into place. And um, he sort of does. He lets things fall into place and then out of nowhere, he goes to this meeting with Detective, I forgot his first name, and the deer actually is the one that said that, oh, Inspector Brady. And he's like, I would ask why I'm going to see him, but I have a feeling I'm not going to get any answers anyway. And she's like, um, it wouldn't matter because um, there are no answers. Wow. And he finds the he finds the pixies basically in the end. However, uh, Rory has a uh, new person to protect him against Angel, and it's somebody from Angel's past oh, to be continued. Oh, that is irony. That's really about it. And then Faith is starting to question working with. Um, Oh god, what's it called? Um, the company, and then also the people she's working with. Uh, she hears them talking about her, and um, one of the agent Mai actually says, "You know, she's a slayer. You know, the slayers are they always play? They always don't play well well with others." And she's kind of upset, but that's where they leave you with Faith. At some point, I have a feeling Faith is going to come back to Angel. It's just a matter of time. It doesn't look like she's going to enjoy working with uh, this company much longer. And even Buffy was brought up by Agent Kennedy to her, and she didn't look like she liked that too much either. Okay. So to conclude this week, Michael will be doing Blackout issue number three. Yeah, so Blackout issue number three, um, like um, we saw how uh, the character, like uh, he was having Blackout, was having uh, trouble with uh, his teleporter going like uh, through the teleporter from you know one one to the other and then he found out that um, what he was doing wrong with the whole circle thing on his hand so uh, he finds out how he used a portal and almost uh, getting caught there forever and everything and uh, you know he's still uh, trying to learn how to use it so meanwhile he goes t um, What's her name? Some Stark, I think. Luca? Oh, Luca, yeah. yeah. Luca actually plays a huge role uh, in this uh, comic book where uh, she actually, uh, like from last issue where we saw those big robots and everything, uh, Blackout actually goes to Luca and uh, tries to uh, stop her with all the stuff that's happening and he takes out the guards. Uh, meanwhile, afterwards, uh, he learns how to use the portal of that, and then uh, he has a uh, conversation with uh, Luca, and Luca's like trying to tell him that uh, there's like a, the big robot from what we saw in the last issue, and that big robot actually attacks both Luca and Blackout. Meanwhile, Blackout saves Luca from the attack, and now it's a whole big uh, free for all fight between Blackout and that big robot, and. You know, it looked like that blackout wasn't doing so well, but um, it's it's going to be very uh, challenging now. Yeah, it looks like the problem double. Yeah, make it really double. Mm -hmm. And then I, I looked into a little bit of King Tiger Refugee Part 3. I really tried to like it, but... Doesn't look like something I, I care I about. I just don't really care about it. I mean, I looked into it. It was okay, but not my taste of interest. But Blackout was good. But Blackout was good. No, no, don't get me wrong. Blackout was amazing and that you should definitely check out with the whole thing of what's been going on. It's just wow. And with that, that's it for this week's Indie Review, guys. Don't forget to check out Comic Related, Comic Frontline, and Zone4Podcast.com. Together we get your number one source for Comic Related news, reviews, and a whole bunch more. This week, like I said, was New York Comic Con Special Edition. If you're interested in seeing any of the reviews, I uh, interviews, I, Mike, Cindy, or Cat had during um, your Comic Con Special Edition. You can check it out at Comic Frontline. Cat has some on her channel. Mike, I, and Cindy did a, a whole video, which actually we put up last after yeah. everybody's interviews. So you can check that out also on ComicFrontline.com. We had a really nice time, like I said, and hopefully I'll have time to do this special episode for It's a Podcast or. Yeah. It'll just become one full-fledged yeah. episode. And just uh, relating to Special Edition, uh, I do have two videos planned for my Deuterac 18 site. Mm -hmm. So you'll be expecting that as well, uh, hopefully soon this week. Right. So guys, until next time, keep yep. reading, keep collecting, and we will see you guys in the next review. Take care, everybody. Later, everyone.